So hi, everybody. Uh, welcome to our next seminar for the Explainable Fuzzy Challenge. Um, today, we have Dr. Barnabas Bede again. Uh, he gave a great talk last week on uh, gradient descent and fuzzy systems. Um, today, he's going to be expanding on that and talking about reinforcement learning with fuzzy systems. Um, if you missed last week, uh, Dr. Bede is at DigiPen Institute in Washington State. Um, he earned his PhD in mathematics from Babas Boye University in Romania. His research interests include fuzzy sets, fuzzy logic, and image processing. And at DigiPen, he mainly focuses on developing class material and doing research in fuzzy sets and various topics in mathematical analysis. He's also heavily involved in the North American Fuzzy Information Processing Society, serving in organizational roles, as well as contributing research. So with that, I'll turn it over to you, Barnabas. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much for inviting me. I'm uh, glad to be here and expand further. Yeah, last year, uh, actually, we had uh, we had uh, one talk and I tried to compress everything into one single <laughs> talk and it didn't work out very well. So I think it's a, it's a better, better, uh, better idea to have it over two talks because, uh, well, one on one hand, uh, the topics are disjoint enough to merit two talks and on the other hand it's uh it's uh yeah just time and we can and there are new developments too that that uh that were happening since then so i'm gonna uh share my screen here we go yes so we will talk about reinforcement learning and uh as uh, Tim mentioned last week, we we had a, a talk about uh, about fuzzy systems, fuzzy systems, and uh, I'm gonna start with reviewing some of that, what we will be using uh, today, and spe specifically Takagi Sugeno fuzzy systems we will we will be using. So let's see what is a, a fuzzy rule based system again. Yeah, so a fuzzy rule-based system is of the form if antecedent and consequence, and uh, they can be formalized into uh, fuzzy rules of this type. Let's say this is general enough. Of course, could be even more antecedents, even more consequences. Uh, so uh, if X is AI and Y is BI, then Z is CI, where AI, BI, CI are fuzzy sets, and there is a counter for the rule number. So how to evaluate this in the Mamdani setting? You would evaluate using uh, basically taking maxima about the firing level with the output, individual outputs, and then taking the center of gravity of that uh, um, as a result, yes, to get a single output at the end of the day. Yes, and the picture for that was uh, kind of like this. And Mamdani systems are pretty much uh, the most uh, interpretable ones in the fuzzy field, so they can uh, be translated into understandable, humanly understandable fuzzy rules. Now, for uh, for uh, learning, though, they have a deficiency uh, when we try to take derivatives of the COG. Then uh, it's really hard. So, therefore, you're gonna we're gonna work on Takagi Sugeno system. And that's true for the reinforcement learning also. When we take derivatives with uh, Takagi Sugeno systems, we still need gradients. Therefore, therefore we need uh, Takagi Sugeno systems. So a Takagi Sugeno system with constant outputs, basically is of the form if X is AI, there could be here and Y is BI, but I just uh, forgot to... <laughs> Uh, make this general enough. So there could be other antecedents here, then Z equal WI, and WI is the output of the rule. And this time it's a constant. This output then can be combined into a weighted average of the outputs. So Takagi Sugeno system has fuzzy antecedents and crisp consequences, but the main advantage is this formula is a lot easier than uh, the combination of the two formulas over here, 
and there yes so this means that takagi sugeno systems are takagi sugeno kang systems are uh, easier to to manage in reinforcement learning so let's start working on reinforcement learning. So uh, the outline of this part will be, we will talk about uh, reinforcement learning in general, and then specifically how this can be achieved in Takagi Sugeno fuzzy system. This is still an ongoing research. So there are many areas that are still under, yeah, under investigation and uh, yeah. Um, but the general idea, can help uh, basically design better uh, systems, especially in games. And uh, yeah, the paradigms for reinforcement learning in fuzzy uh, can be easily transported. So most most of the reinforcement learning uh, ideas are in uh, you know, working with uh, with uh, neural networks. So when we have a neural network. Uh, learning with reinforcement learning, then uh, to translate that into a Takagi Sugeno system with reinforcement learning is uh, relatively easy. We have the same ideas, the same uh, theory, basically. But this time, one of the components, instead of a neural network that returns a certain uh, value, then we have a uh, the Takagi Sugeno system returning the same value. Takagi Sugeno TSK. I'm going to try to use TSK. <laughs> I'm always uh, abbreviating it wrongly. Anyway, so let's start with talking about what is reinforcement learning. So reinforcement learning is basically uh, learning from an environment, yes, uh, based on actions and rewards. So in the environment, our agent has a state, yes? Let's start with the state. So state is the most, yeah, let's, let's start here. It's kind of weird to start here, but anyway. So every agent is uh, in a state in the given environment, yes? And uh, in that state performs an action. Yes, so then this action uh, changes the environment. Yes, the action will change the environment. And once the environment has changed, uh, we have a new state. So basically, for example, if the robot is here, then changes so like a step forward, then it's gonna go up on this little maze over there. By the way, also uh, the concept of a reward plays a key role here. So we have a reward at every step, there might be a reward for the agent, yes. For example, in a maze, they could find uh, yeah, gold or something in the, in the given maze, yes. So, or could be a punishment saying, okay, there is a, a negative reward, which is basically a punishment that will enforce the agent to learn a given action. So this uh, this uh, idea is basically uh, conducting uh, leading to reinforcement learning, which is learning the actions that maximize your future reward. Yeah, not only immediate reward. So I know that here is a, for example, um, here I can I can get a, a reward in the next step, and I could maximize that easily. I just look around and see which way to go for the most reward that I want to get, but I'm looking more deeply into the environment. I look ahead in the environment that I could look at what is the most reward that I could get over all the entire game. Yes, so I'm not just maximizing my next step. I'm going to maximize the uh, total expected reward that I can get through the entire game. So that's the main idea of reinforcement learning. If uh, you already did some reinforcement learning uh, 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 classes, then you might be familiar with these topics, yes? If not, then we can just go over them. I think uh, in general, um, the ideas are, are uh, new enough in, in Q-learning and uh, neural networks that that we might need to go over them. Okay, so here's one more uh, version of this uh, reinforcement learning uh, 
uh, picture where we start to put together uh, uh, basically notations that we will be using. So the state of the uh, agent is st at time t. The reward that it gets is rt. The action it takes is at. And then in the environment, it's it's going to end up being in state uh, st plus 1, gets reward rt plus 1, and so on and so forth, and continues on this loop. Okay, Let's see a few concepts in the terminology. S is the set of states. ST at a given time T is a set of actions, all possible actions that I can take. Yeah, for example, in a maze application, you have a maze and you want to go uh, with the robot through the maze, you can go uh, four directions. So we have four possible actions, north, south, east, west. Yes, and uh, at any time you could choose one of these actions. Pi is the policy. Policy is what action to be followed at given state S. Uh, so, for example, uh, uh, for example, if I'm, I'm, the policy will tell me if I'm here, where, which way to go, this way or this way or this way or this way. Let's say that here's a big reward for me, then I'm gonna be going this way. That's the policy telling me which way to go here. In uh, in every corner of uh, of the system, the policy will tell me which way to to go, given we are in a given state. The reward R S is the immediate reward in state S. Uh, typically, uh, you can you can formulate it in a yeah uh, you can you can have a a simple reward. For example, you get in a, some terminal states, you get a big reward, or uh, you can make it. Uh, more like a punishment, you get uh, negative rewards when you, for example, uh, die in a game. Yes. So imagine uh, our asteroid game that you are be are going to be uh, working on. Yes. The reward contains a reward, a possible reward. There are many ways to construct this. And uh, yeah, I think uh, the team from DigiPen used the following uh, type of rewards. Uh, we got rewards for every asteroid that uh, was uh, hit. Yes. And then we've got rewards for staying alive. Yes. <laughs> and uh, yeah, got big negative rewards for dying. Yes. For losing life. Uh, in this game. And uh, so altogether, you can get a reward that uh, makes it, uh, makes the game better. Reward is one of the most important things. If you formulate correctly the re reward, then you can get uh, yeah, the system to learn better. It, uh, the process of uh, basically setting up a reward system that works well for a given problem is uh, reward shaping. Okay, transition probability. Probability, uh, this is the probability that given state, we are in state S, we took action A, and we end up in state S prime. That's gonna be the transition probability. For example, yeah, let's say that you are following a rule. Uh, yeah, you wanna go north, but there is a transition probability of uh, let's say 0.8% to go north and uh, there are chances that your agent doesn't follow the rules. For example, you are driving a car and your uh, intention, your action is to, uh, to go faster. Yeah, let's say that you have a probability that it actually it will go faster while uh, there could be other obstacles around and there is a probability that it will not go faster in, even if you want to. So there is a transition probability from one state to the other. Value function. Value function is the most important concept here. Uh, is the total expected reward. Yes. Uh, so what is going on here? You're starting from a state as zero, then you're taking action A0, then you end up in a state S1, let's say, then action A1, then state S2, and so on forever. 
you get a reward R of S0 in the first state S0. Then you get a reward RS1 in state S1, RS2 in state S2. Now the total, the future rewards are discounted. So this is a discount factor. So uh, yeah, you know, there is a, a Hungarian saying that uh, it's better to have a, a small bird today than a big chicken like tomorrow. So, <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's gonna say that, uh, uh, all right, that's not a good translation, but yeah, that's the idea. So I want the immediate rewards to be mine. Yeah, then, then the future reward I counted, but I don't count it necessarily as strongly as the immediate reward. Yes. This gamma is a factor to typically is a 0 0.9 or something like that. So that's a, a typical value for the discount factor. In this way, you're going to get uh, basically uh, a total reward over the entire game here. Yeah. Uh, by the way, the agent plays a game in this, my interpretation of this, uh, but it could be different than a game, could be uh, driving a, an autonomous vehicle and then staying alive is basically the reward, not hitting anything, positive reward, hitting something, negative reward, going too fast, negative reward, yeah, so on and so forth. Okay, uh, here's a, a typical example. Um, this is actually uh, from Kernigan, Richie, no, I don't know. Well, no, oh, no, it's uh, from Norton. Okay, one of the basic AI books in uh, the field. So here we have a mouse. Excuse my uh, drawing skills. Yes, so here we have a mouse, and uh, then uh, uh, basically it needs to, so this is a typical example to use in this uh, problem. We have a mouse and uh, the mouse needs to find a cheese, yes? So here's a, a cheese wedge, for example. So the mouse needs to find the cheese and tries to avoid the cat, yes, over here. Sorry for my... <laughs> Cat especially. Anyway, so uh, the idea is we have to follow uh, basically a path to find the cheese. And uh, the policy, the actions to be taken could be up, down, uh, left or right. Yes. So that's basically which way to go. This is a wall. This and uh, you cannot go outside. Um, here, for example, the actions uh, that you can consider are up, down, east, right. A policy would uh, associate to every to every uh, state an action to follow. Yes, and well, probably I just draw the optimal policy or something close to it, but this is not necessarily the case. So the mouth doesn't know the policy at the at uh, initially. Uh, it just tries to take random actions, yes, and either ends up with the cheese or with the cat, yes. So for reinforcement learning, uh, initially we have no idea which way to operate, yes, or could be could be different. With a fuzzy system, you can design a system that already knows something and then do reinforcement learning to improve it. That's what happened actually with... Uh, with last year's uh, DigiPen team, Hot Fuzzy, who basically designed a fuzzy system that was uh, already uh, doing uh, reasonable choices <laughs> in the in the asteroid game that you are going to implement this year. And then, uh, okay, I mean, not really that. It's it was a previous version of the game, and this this time it's going to be a different story, a more adversarial game. So. Anyway, so uh, with these actions, then we can we can improve. So this is, for instance, an uh, action. Then you have a reward of plus one when you reach the cheese. You have a reward of negative one when you get uh, eaten by the cat. And uh, yeah, 
you can set up, uh, for example, a negative small reward to uh, be idling in one place so that the uh, agent will learn to go faster to the cheese. Yes, but uh, the, those would be the rewards. The value of a of a of a of a, of a state can be calculated by this uh, this formula, but this is not the best formula. And actually, uh, what uh, what happened? Uh, Bellman came up with an equation that, uh, yeah, is uh, his equation, Bellman's equation, that represents the bell the the value function in a better way. So Bellman's equation is that the value function is the immediate reward plus gamma times the future discounted rewards. But those are basically impacted by the discount factor, the transition probabilities, and the value it at the future uh, state. So for example, here, let's say the value here is uh, one, then the, this uh, has a reward, immediate reward of negative 0 0.1, then you can calculate the transition, let's say that the mouse tries to go this way. And let's assume that we have a 0 0.8 probability that the mouse will follow the instruction. So they, there is an arrow showing that way is the cheese, but the mouse is uh, gonna follow it with 0.8% uh, probability. And there is a 0.1% probability to go this way or this way it will never go backwards, but anyway, for example, but that's just an example. So if we have a, this situation, then for example, the transition probability from this state to this one is 0 0.8, from this state to this one is 0 0.1, yes. And from this state staying here, basically if it hits the wall, it's gonna stay here, let's say. That's another convention that we use, is gonna be a 0 0.1 probability. And then when you sum up all these, you can come up with the value in the current state. And this equation you can use iteratively. So you, you have to use iteratively. So you use iteratively this equation on each state and then use again, use again, use again, update the value like a, like a fixed point problem you are trying to get close to uh, basically the solution of an equation. The solution of an equation that actually is a linear system. So this is a system of linear equations because these are uh, known coefficients. And if we have, we have finitely many states, S, S prime are finitely many of them, then these equations can be written out as a system of linear equations. And then you can use, well, NumPy to solve it. Nevertheless, in most situations, there are infinitely many states and infinitely many uh, transition probabilities, and there is no way to really solve these equations. Therefore, we use an iterative process to calculate the value function. So we calculate the value function by updating this equation many, many times. The optimal value function is basically the maximum of the of the value function that you can do by changing, well, uh, getting the best best policy for this. Uh, yes, so you figure out what is the optimal value function, then you can figure out what is the best policy that uh, you you need to follow. Yes, so this is uh, the equation when I have when I'm trying to find the best best value function possible. All right, so how do we do learning, basically? Uh, typically, uh, if you calculate the value function, then you can learn anything. So for example, here, the value of, uh, of this will be like 0 0.7, this is 0 0.6, and then 0 0.3, then I'm gonna know from here that this way I have the best, uh, the best action to take from here to here, I have the best action uh, to take. So the value function can guide the policy. If I know the best value function, then I'm gonna know the best policy, always 
try to go the increasing the, to, to, to the highest value function around, you know, let's say here is 0 0.1. Yeah, this one has 0 0.2, yeah, probably negative. I, I don't know, depends on the action. So, so this is just an example. Um, so the best policy can be obtained by knowing the best value function. Our goal in reinforcement learning is to learn the best policy. So maybe I forgot to mention here that pi star is the best policy, best policy, uh, which is maximizing the value function, which maximizes this v star, uh, maximizes v. Yeah. Okay, so one, one thing to, okay, so let's assume that we are shooting for V star directly, but I'm going to use V just, just for the simplicity of notation, uh, we will denote V, the optimal value function. Okay, it's not actually the optimal. We, we'll, we will never know V star necessarily in a game. So this is our best guess of the optimal value function. So V is approaching V star, let's say. So one thing that we could do is a uh, gradient-based learning in this uh, setting. So the first thing uh, that we could consider is uh, a gradient ascent method. So we want to maximize V, so maximize V. That's our problem. To do that, uh, we calculate a gradient. Here is an approximate gradient. Uh, what happens if I modify my action, my state to S plus delta ds? Yes, that's gonna be the value of a next state minus value of the current state divided by ds, what happened between the modifications. Now, uh, this V of S plus ds, basically in typical settings, this would be the next state. And uh, let's say in the asteroid game, this would be the value of the next frame. So here I have, a, I have an asteroid and one ship, let's say. And then in the next frame, uh, the best option would be to turn towards the asteroid. So in the next frame, I want to turn, yes. So that's going to be I'm my V of S prime. So this, let's put it like this. So S was originally this one, and then S prime is the turn ship. And then in the next to next, I'm going to shoot the asteroid. So that value that I'm going to be able to shoot the asteroid, that reward from shooting the asteroid propagates, and I'm going to, it's going to tell me that you should turn right and then for optimizing for future reward, you should uh, then shoot. So here, S prime would be, for instance, the uh, position with the agent state when it turned a little bit. So what happened here, we combine these into a single constant, let's call it alpha. DS is basically what is the difference between states. That's really hard to quantify. Instead, we will look at the whole thing and we will call it alpha and we will have it a constant value. Typically, it's a small value, like a learning rate. This uh, here is gonna be uh, the reward that I get in S prime. Here, I don't get any reward, but gamma times the future value, which is big for this case, because I turned towards the asteroid and I'm gonna be able to shoot it. So this value just increased for me. So this part of the system is gonna be uh, basically the, the V of S plus DS. And we combine these together. And this is basically the temporal difference learning. So after one frame, how much do I gain? Well, that's the basically the temporal difference. And that's whole expression here. So this is basically a gradient-based method and it's an approximation of the gradient in the setting of reinforcement learning. Here it takes into account uh, yeah, Bellman's equation. And uh, we assume that we ended up in S prime here.
with different probabilities, you can get different S primes here, but then uh, your update rule will, will uh, basically, yeah, basically will not change that much because this will be then closer to VS if it's not a bigger reward. Okay, so this is uh, temporal difference learning. Now Q learning, the, another approach to, to reinforcement learning. Um, yeah, temporal difference learning is very popular and uh, yeah, it's, it was the first uh, basic reinforcement learning method. Nevertheless, it's kind of unstable uh, because uh, there is a network that uh, typically, so value functions. So how in neural networks uh, learning would work? The value function is basically given by a neural network output. And then I'm going to calculate everything else. Here, this is the neural network output. Here is the future uh, states output of the network. The value function is always a neural network output, and I get a reward. So what is going on here? Uh, the network is chasing its own tail. That's what uh, happens here, because uh, basically this modified uh, value will will uh, be immediately uh, v, uh, uh, v of s will be uh, getting closer to this value so if this is uh, not stable then uh, v of s will be also not stable so this needs to be more stable for the problem to work out otherwise the network could just uh, chase around and uh, yeah get uh, nowhere <laughs> Yes, for example, if it turns too much, imagine this as a turning too much. The value function is probably going to be, okay, I turned too much. Now I'm going to turn back, but I'm turning again too much, again too much. So I chase my own tail immediately, then it could be a problem for this uh, setting. Okay, so... To avoid that, we have different options. For one of them is Q learning. Q learning is basically uh, optimizing the so-called action value function. Action value function. Um, what's the difference between value function and action value function? It takes into account the state where we are at and the action that we take from there. So action will basically, so the action value function. Uh, okay, I tend to call it quality because that's just simple. The Q quality function is basically the quality of a state and an action pair. So let's say that we are going back here to the, to the, to the mouse and the, and the, and cheese example. So here we have all four actions. Yes. And we will have a quality of this state given action up. So we will have uh, four, four Q, four quality values here in this. In this, uh, we will have four of them. Q of, uh, if of this state action being up, how good is action this state if I go right, how good is this state if I go left, and how good is this state if I go down? Yes, all four are computed for this particular state. And I could do that for all states. So this is just this S, uh, let's say this is S1. This is this, let's say S0, so Q of S0, and then all of those. And to Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. And you have all of those Q functions for all of them. Now, uh, if I am able to learn the Q function, that's kind of a kind of a a more detailed value function. Among them, I'm going to have the value function. The best of these four Qs is going to be the V function. So if I'm able to learn Q, then I can get V and I can get the best action, uh, the best policy again. So the goal of this uh, of Q learning is to learn the best action value function. So Q of SA is the expected maximum reward obtained at state S if we take action A. So here, that's the difference from value function. 
we fix an action in each state. I mean, we don't fix it. I mean, we take all possible actions from that state. And we have the same formula, the temporal difference. Well, uh, by the same uh, method, it, uh, it actually boils down to the to very similar equations. Instead of V in this formula, we have, uh, we have, uh, we have, uh, Q function for each state and action. I'm going to have the QSA and then the max reward here. Um, yes. Uh, here, this is not 100% correct. Ah, yeah, that's okay. So the temporal difference with Q learning, this would be an A prime here. Yeah, I forgot here a prime probably. But A prime, what action is here? So that's a, a difference. That's a, that's a question here. What action do I choose there? We are gonna choose the best possible action. So I'm gonna take the maximum of these Qs. Okay, uh, and for Q learning, uh, Q of SA is typically the output of a neural network. If it's gonna know what state it is and takes taking different actions. Yes, for example, for our, our uh, ship, what actions we could take. We could turn left, turn right, uh, go forward, go back. Uh, Yes, yeah, shoot, yes. And uh, for example, our neural network or any system could basically output the probability to do one of them. So probability one to turn left. So we have a network that basically comes in strong from uh, the input values that are here. That network with output turn right, turn left with different probability to turn left, probability to turn right, probability to shoot, yes, and so on and so forth. You can, you can get here all actions. And the network has weights, WI weights, denote weights in any layer anywhere. And you can do Q learning, uh, deep learning on these networks, let's say. Then in this situation, uh, when we learn WI, then we will update it according to this equation right here. So this is how we could update the weights of a system. Now in this, uh, in a typical deep learning paper, this would be a neural network weights. For, for the case of a fuzzy system, these will be weights of a, uh, of a fuzzy system. So basically what is uh, to note here, is that uh, we don't have we don't have a big uh, big uh, new theory needed for for reinforcement learning in fuzzy. We can adapt the uh, reinforcement learning theory from from deep learning directly to fuzzy. As uh, yeah, Takagi systems are very very similar to to uh, neural networks as we saw last. Talk, no. So there is one problem here though. What action is here? This A prime is what action? So I'm gonna take the best possible action. Yes. So to maximize Q, the uh, correct equation is basically, yeah, old value of Q plus alpha times, and this is future reward. And here I'm gonna look at the best action in the future reward. And uh, if I iterate on this equation, I'm gonna see that it's gonna take into account the best future action, which takes into account the best future from the future, an S second and so on and so forth. The problem still persists that uh, we have uh, here, we have here uh, the network chasing its own tail, that's still there. So in this uh, setting, uh, we will consider the uh, so-called target. The target is basically, uh, the target output is gonna be R of S prime plus gamma max. This, 
this is basically where I want to be. I'm here now, the temporal difference is this is the future, this is the current, and then take difference. So we call this as the target. With this uh, notation, our, our maximizing Q problem becomes easier a little bit, and we get this uh, as the uh, current equation. Okay, uh, as we already tried to mention, we will uh, see how this would work with PSK fuzzy systems. So, an explainable reinforcement is a challenging problem. Ch so, reinforcement learning is typically the most unexplainable in many situations. You don't know why the decisions are taken in all the cases. For example, um, yeah, different uh, reinforcement learning algorithms for for uh, for different problems would take uh, unusual actions that uh, sometimes are harder to explain. So how we want to explain it? Basically, an option that we uh, develop. I mean, uh, Shivam Kumar is a former master student graduated and he uh, considered uh, the quality function Q of SA to be the output of a Takagi Sugeno system, PSK of S and A. So basically the system would look like this. You have uh, state input, action input, and then a Takagi Sugeno system would be basically, yeah, I'd like to draw it like this. So these are the antecedents of a Takagi Sugeno system. Yes. And then these go into, and we have two antecedents. So it's going to be each of them goes into its own. But well, let's just say that they are going into this system. And then the Takagi Sugeno system outputs uh, probability of action. Let's say this is action one that we take uh, next. So the probability of action. Next, let's say left turn, right turn, or let, let's just assume that we are looking at the mouse problem. So up, down, uh, right, left. So we would have like a, a probability for each of them. So TSK of S and A in the this layer is going to be basically the probability to go up from this system. The Takagi Sugeno system, oh, wait, basically to update Q, we could still use these same equations as, a, as before. So when you, are, when you are learning with a system like here, we have two steps. We need to update Q and we need to update, update the weights that calculate Q. Um, and those iterate um, against each other. So this one, like a, like fuzzy clustering, you would have a um, an assignment step and an update step. So basically, we have uh, weights that are going to be updated, but that changes how I calculate Q. Then I need to recalculate Q. Then that changes how weights are going to be calculated because I changed the target and uh, well, everything. So then I recalculate Y, the W and so on and so forth. So basically the update steps of Q and W alternate each other in a reinforcement learning. So for the Takagi Sugeno reinforcement learning system, the same is true. I'm gonna calculate Q of SA by the TSK. Then I update the weights of the, of the TSK system. And then I calculate Q again by the TSK, update the weights. Oh, uh, uh, there is a, uh, another step that I didn't show, recalculate Q or update Q, update Q based on the equation here, this one, one. And here, I think I forgot the max. Yeah, so here, this should be with the max over A. Yeah, so this should be the same equation as here. We need the same uh, max over A. 
Yep. Okay. So uh, that's basically the idea of a Takagisugeno uh, fuzzy system. Yeah, here's a little bit more detailed steps <clears throat> here. Yeah, so maximize Q. Yeah, we have the target here. And uh, this is basically what we are gonna have to calculate. Okay, um, so how do we solve the problem of the network chasing its own tail? So, so uh, the next idea is to, to uh, incorporate a target network. The idea, so the network chasing its own tail is a problem because uh, yeah, it could lead to instability. So what is the solution? I'm gonna fix the target network for a while. I don't update it that often, yes? So I'm gonna fix the target network and I'm gonna update Q uh, for the uh, other parts of the network. So I'm gonna have basically two networks. One of them calculates Q. So I'm gonna have Q is gonna be TSK1 of S and A. And the target network Y is gonna be calculated R of S prime plus gamma time max A in A. And here I'm going to have a TSK2, a second network of S and A, yes? And I'm going to alternate these two steps, yes? I'm going to alternate these two steps. And I don't update this one as often oh, with, the, with the weight updates. So I'm going to update the weights for the... Uh, uh, for the target network here, for the Q network, every step, and we're gonna update the weights of the of the target network. So this is the Q network, Q network, and this is the target network. I mean, target system. I'm gonna call it Q system. This is the target system. So I'm gonna update that only uh, every C steps. So then every C steps, I'm gonna take the Q system and dump it into the target system. So I have a new target, but I don't, uh, this method delays me uh, to update the target system every step. And that allows a stable, a more stable learning in a, in a reinforcement learning problem. Yeah, so the biggest problem that reinforcement learning hits is typically instability. These learning algorithms get uh, very unstable uh, in, in many situations because it's basically a fixed point problem. And fixed point problems are, let's talk now mathematics. If a fixed point problem is uh, hit, in mathematics, then you want the underlying function to be a contraction. So your your uh, space cannot, your search space cannot grow from there. That's the, the problem. So uh, in that case, we need to make sure that some parameters of the system fulfill some mathematical relations. So here's a uh, Q learning with target network uh, idea. So I'm gonna have initial state of the game ST. Then we have a Q network that predicts the Q values. The Q values will allow me to take an action A and the arriving game state ST plus one. And this game state ST plus one is then fed into the target network. Yes, target network. Yeah, this is S prime in here, yes. And uh, in the target network, I'm gonna calculate the Q values using this target network. It's used to update the Q values, yes. Uh, but I don't update the Q network necessarily. Uh, so periodically, I, I will I will basically synchronize the two networks. 
so that I have uh, basically uh, learning. Now let me think if you basically go Q network to the target. Yes, so periodically you copy. So actually I was wrong. You don't dump here the Q system. You basically uh, copy the target system onto the Q system periodically. Yes. Okay, so this is one one paradigm that improves uh, reinforcement learning, so it becomes more stable. Another another idea that uh, basically works further on the target network idea is the experience replay. So in this case, the agent stores previous experience, which is in the in the set of I was in state ST, I took action AT, I got reward RT, and I ended up in state ST plus one. So all these, for example, are stored as experience. So the uh, experience of our agent in the in the asteroid game could be, for example, I was here, then I turned, then I shot this asteroid, but there are now two more asteroids, and then what happens next? So I can store... Uh, couple of those p elements, uh, p minus one elements from e p minus p to e t. So I'm going to have uh, basically uh, yeah, p plus one element. So, so basically, I'm going to have a, a finite value of exp ex previous experience. And the target value is now not calculated by a target network. But it's calculate well, okay, sorry, that's wrong. Uh, the target network is still calculating the target value, but it's based on mini batches from the replay memory. So it's gonna take, I don't know, a couple of elements from here, uh, like three, let's say. And based on these three elements, it's gonna take the uh the uh the uh, calculation to the target value. So in this setting, the y target value is R of S prime plus gamma TSK2 a target system, but this target system is based on parameters from experience, from the buffer of experience values. Yes, so previous states and actions uh, that I have taken before. Yes, so that's the idea of experience replay. This stabilizes again, uh, reinforcement learning algorithms. Uh, finally, and actually this was the the, uh, the system that was implemented last year for the winning uh, <laughs> uh, winning game uh, by Team Hot Fuzzy from the Japan Institute of Technology is basically actor critic architecture where we act out a policy, we have a policy Yes, we know what actions to take in every case. Well, predicted by the Takagisugeno system to the ESK system predicts what action to take. Turn left, turn right, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And that policy is now uh, now the actor. Yes, and well, we enact the policy. So basically, the agent plays the game based on this TSK system. Yes, so agent plays the game for a couple of frames. Actually, I think they were like 100 frames or so, pretty pretty many frames. So the actor would, would yeah, okay. Uh, I don't know exactly what are the, I, I'll have to, for, for a talk like explaining exactly what what was the winning uh, strategy, we need to invite uh, <laughs> uh, students uh, who actually com competed. But I think uh, I have an idea on how this really worked. So excuse me if I was uh, incorrect or, or partially correct in some of these situations. But be sorry. <laughs> Okay, so basically the actor plays out the game and then uh, collects reward and policy is uh, followed. Policy is the TSK system in the current R, current state. Then we calculate the temporal difference error, the TD error, and that will change the value function. Yes, that's the critic. I use the TD error to calculate the new value function. And then... Uh, 
that value that new value function will change my policy yes if if uh, when i change the policy if this was a good idea so if if uh, the tsk system i change the policy and it's it kept losing then of course i don't change it so i'm only changing it if i get more reward if i after changing the policy versus before changing the policy so actor critic architecture is uh, probably the simplest method of reinforcement learning yes so actor estimates q and the value function by acting on our current policy yes Critic def, uh, basically calculates the temporal difference. Uh, reward through the new policy versus reward from the old policy. If TD is positive, so if the new policy is better than the previous one, I'm going to make the policy change. I'm going to update my policy to be the better one. Yes. And well, we used over multiple steps. We, I mean, not we, the team. I was just uh, watching and learning with them at the same time. So um, an actor critic architecture is uh, is basically a very good uh, method to learn uh, to to produce a, a, a reinforcement learning algorithm in fuzzy. Yes. There are many other things in uh, reinforcement learning, and there are always new developments. Uh, there are uh, huge developments in uh, in uh, uh, yeah in various fields of reinforcement learning. Every uh, every well every week probably there is a, a new new strong paper on uh, on uh, on. Uh, new ideas in reinforcement learning. So uh, this field needs to be watched closely and then uh, yeah, the fuzzy uh, versions will adapt uh, accordingly. Yeah, conclusions from, from this uh, talk are basically uh, uh, using reinforcement learning with target network and experience replay and actor critic uh, uh, environment. Oh, by the way, uh, sorry. Also, I forgot to mention that the team had an actor uh, target network as well, so didn't update right away the things. Even though actor critic would would say you updated right away, we had a they had a target network that was uh, updating it. Uh, not every step, basically, to try to make the learning more stable. Yes, one limitation of the model, of these models, and in reinforcement learning, one big limitation is training time. Yes, uh, reinforcement learning that is on a complicated enough problem will take uh, a lot of time to train. Yes, and uh, the system trained, uh, yeah over several days or weeks probably several days probably on a on a on a machine with two gpus uh, so it was it was pretty much uh, an intense training so uh, there there is limitation there uh, what applications did we do uh, shivam kumar uh, not, uh, shivam kumar worked on the grid world problem and Carpo system and Lunar Lander. Uh, yeah, so basically the Takagi Sugeno system was explored very deeply in these, uh, in these three uh, typical reinforcement learning examples. So basically what his, his thesis goal was to, uh, to show that Fuzzy is able to solve these classical reinforcement learning problems. And he completed that with TSK system. And then Team Hot Fuzzy, composed of Alexander and Alejandro Herrera, uh, worked on the uh, TSK system that won last year's uh, competition. 
the system had uh, used a custom built fuzzy systems library that is described in uh, in the paper by Alexander, Alex Herrera, and myself in, in uh, NAFIPS 2023. And uh, um, uh, why we, would we build a, a new library and not use existing uh, library for this problem was uh, basically besides learning <laughs> experience was, was also the custom built library allows more uh, efficient deep uh, efficient learning for these Takagi Sugaino systems. And we had multiple of them that were connected and then uh, yeah it was not uh, not uh, possible to to use scikit learn fuzzy for that because of the limitations of the system. It didn't allow fast enough calculations in many cases for the reinforcement learning where you really run the uh, game <laughs> over many frames, over multiple uh, uh, epochs. All right. Uh, so reinforcement learning can be uh, implemented successfully in fuzzy and future uh, future direction that I think would be very interesting to investigate is uh, deep reinforcement learning in fuzzy trees. So how, how deep learning would allow us to basically back propagate errors to a fuzzy tree. That would be a very interesting problem. Um, uh, a comment on gradient-based methods versus non-gradient-based. You have learned uh, a couple of weeks ago about uh, genetic algorithms training fuzzy systems and uh, particle swarm optimization used in training fuzzy systems. The uh, advantage of those is basically exploration versus exploitation uh, paradigm. So exploration is I explore the search space in detail. Yes, I could find very uh, uh, interesting solutions. Exploitation is I'm going to zoom in into the search space and I know that the solution is somewhere here and then I'm going to drill down to optimize that further. So reinforcement learning in this setting is more of an exploitation because it's gradient based while uh, genetic fuzzy systems could be more of an exploration type that is uh, basically uh, covering uh, larger uh, areas of the deep of the search space. What would be also interesting is probably another idea that uh, students could investigate is to to uh, to combine genetic fuzzy systems exploration versus with with reinforcement learning exploitation. Um, yeah, so there are many directions that are all possible. The references that I used is uh, basically uh, a book that I wrote, um, Fuzzy Systems, um, Shivam Kumar's uh, master thesis and uh, paper, last year's NAFIPS paper. 2023 now it, uh, it's uh, so the conference is in 2022 but the paper appeared just now uh, and it's in a volume that is already published for 2023 so I did not time travel yeah thank you very much that's all for for today any questions now if you have thank you Marcus. um Let's see. Well, I'm I'm gonna go ahead and uh, go with the the first question, then I'll open it up to everybody else. Um, what recommendations would you have based on your experience, and if you can speak to the your team's experience last year, as far as shaping your reward function? Um. Well, one one uh, one uh, one experience was taking into account the ship uh, to stay alive. Is a it was a very important uh, 
important chain, uh, important uh, idea in the shaping of the reward. So if the reward was only uh, asteroids hit, and then uh, then uh, shaping the then then the then it was a problem. The ships didn't uh, learn to stay alive <laughs> too long. So there was a big uh, big impact from there. Another takeaway was, uh, for instance, uh, so the team had fuzzy designed a fuzzy system that was uh, that was. Uh, um, initially working on fuzzy rules that were com from common sense uh, uh, reasoning. So how you would set up a fuzzy system initially uh, based on common sense reasoning and then uh, uh, reinforcement learning learned to play the game and improved over the common sense fuzzy system. And what was interesting, the system became more aggressive. So the ships were shooting a lot more than before. That was uh, one, another interesting takeaway from experience. We saw that it learned to shoot more, basically. So that was one uh, additional <laughs> piece of information. Yeah, if you will have time, try to look at the, uh, let me see if I can really quick find that. The, uh, the YouTube uh, video for XFC 2022 highlights. Yes, so I don't know if you can see what I'm seeing here. Mm -hmm. Let yep. me stop. Can you see? Yep, looks good. Yeah, so this is a video that was basically how the agent uh, Hot Fuzzy was playing the game. This was, I'm gonna put this in the chat and you can watch it. But there are some interesting situations. It's always fun to watch these. But this is the last one that I'm gonna let through. <laughs> This was a big surprise, <laughs> surprising behavior. So this is something that no one would anticipate. <laughs> but anyway, we do uh, we do like to put them in interesting uh, situations to see how they react. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm, definitely. It was very interesting to see, and uh, yeah, it will be very interesting to see if this will be now adversarial. Very much yes. so. And actually, on the, the topic of um, training time, can you speak to how much training time, once once they had their final configuration um, with selection of their functions for uh, whatever they were doing with actor critic methods and their mm -hmm. final architecture, do you know about how long that took to train in the uh, long time? A couple of days, I think it was the, the final system. And, and uh, the machine was a two GPU, uh, um, thirty sixty Nvidia uh, machine, which was, and uh, the the uh, the team used uh, basically the GPU a lot for the calculations. So the code was was uh, basically optimized for using it on the GPU. So it worked with with uh, so the uh, uh, with CUDA. I don't know exactly the details of that one. <laughs> sure. Um, oh, and then last question. Um, would you be open to sharing any of the example um, applications like the cart pole or the um, I think it, you said you did the Lunar Lander. Were those both the OpenAI examples? Mm -hmm. Yes. So uh, I don't know. So the 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 I'm I'm gonna be able to share. It's a it's a master thesis which is public. So I'm gonna find the, the file. <laughs> 
and uh, and share it i uh, i can share it uh, with you in, and then you can you can continue to share it further the master thesis i don't think that uh, i i will i will check with uh, with shivam what is the status if if uh, so i'm trying to convince him to write a paper <laughs> that is derived from his master thesis in a journal. And, uh, yeah, that will happen sometime, hopefully. Right, yeah. But, uh, yeah, uh, but I will uh, share his, his thesis, I can share right away with you. You just have to find it. Yeah, great. And your, your comment on uh, reinforcement learning with fuzzy trees is, uh, as you know, an interest of mine, so. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yep, we can chat about that further. Um, well, do we have any other questions from the audience? Okay, we have Sam and Jared. Going once, going twice. All right. Well, thank you, Dr. Bede, for giving a great talk on reinforcement learning. Um, I learned some new things um, about uh, things that you guys have been working on, actually. So, yeah, that's... Uh, <laughs> very relevant to uh, the student competitors. Hopefully they they take some of the advice and with some examples, maybe they'll try implementing it. Mm -hmm. well, thank you. Thank you very much for the invitation. And uh, well, looking forward to working with you in the future on Fuzzy Trees. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yep. All right. All right. Mm -hmm. Thanks a lot. Yep. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thanks. Bye.